this literary clock will literally show you the time. If, like me, you have an old Kindle literally gathering dust in, uh, in a drawer somewhere, I'm going to show you how to repurpose it into this literary clock. Now, the instructions are available online, and I'm going to give you uh, a walkthrough of how to uh, install the necessary software. We will need to know some information about our Kindle to be able to choose the correct files to jailbreak it with. So simply switching it on and going into the menu, we look at the settings and the information that we need, uh, two things, the, the beginning of the serial number will identify which model of Kindle, so links in the description. Um, this turns out to be a Kindle 3 Wi-Fi and the version that it's running is 3.3 so those pieces of information are important to us. Having determined which model of Kindle that we have and the code that it's running, the firmware version, we come into this page here and this file is applicable to myself. Uh, obviously if you have a different version you need to follow the instructions below, but I'm going to grab this one. In the jailbreak files that we downloaded, there's a README file, and what we need to do is to place the correct version of firmware into the root directory of our Kindle. And as it explains here, the different uh, varieties, as we saw was a B008, which is the Kindle 3 Wi Fi and therefore we are looking for the file k3w and here we can see it in the directory now we connect up our Kindle and see that it's been recognized as uh, an external USB drive we are in the root directory now we simply copy and paste into our root directory. So the next trick is we have to eject and unplug the Kindle and install the update. The first thing to do is to eject it. And we can unplug it. And going to home menu settings menu update your kindle okay and the update is installing update successful so the update has been completed and uh, nothing looks very different the USB network hack and installing Python are done in exactly the same way. So go ahead and do that and uh, we'll reconvene when we have everything. Having installed all of those things onto the Kindle, the next step is, as it says here, uh, you should now be able to log into the device using SSH. Whilst that is true, um, there is a magic spell that you need to get it to work. Actually on the Kindle we have to activate the USB network function to be able to connect to it uh, either via the USB cable or via Wi-Fi. So in the first instance we just switch it on and then get our keyboard by in this case hitting the, the Dell key and the first command that we need is semicolon debug on. Note that the O is a, is a capital. The next thing we do is to activate the USB net. Similarly, we go in here. Now, depending on your Kindle, in my case, a Kindle 3 Wi-Fi, the command starts with a tilde. On others, you need to use um, the the tick, which is this guy up here, not to be confused with the single quote. So USB network and enter that. Now when we connect our, our Kindle, normally 
what will happen is that it will de be detected and then appear as a USB drive. But in this instance, we heard the magical ping pong. Now it has magically transformed itself into a networking device. Looking into our device manager, we can see that this USB Ethernet or in this gadget has appeared. If we now look in our networking, we can see that a mysterious Ethernet has appeared. Now, I've already been through this process before. We can see here that the host IP is 192.168.2.1 and that the Kindle will be 192.168.2.2. What you have to do, as I say, I've already done it, is to go into the properties, look for the IPv4 and put it in as a static address. So the, the host, the PC and the default gateway is the Kindle. Now we are in a position to use our SSH function To log in to our Kindle now, we need to find out what the root password is. And on the page here, we can see clearly we need to put in our serial number. And we can see our selection of possible root passwords to try. Log in as root. So we'll try the first one, Mario. And indeed, we are in. What we need to do now is to go to the root directory and then we can see what files are below us and we need to go to the mount directory followed by us. In this directory we need to make our time lit subdirectory which we do with make directory. With that directory created we can then copy with FileZilla into that location. In FileZilla, what we need to do is to create an SFTP session credentials as before. So here we are logged on, navigate to our new directory. And this is where we need to put the folders. So the time test, I think the CSV file is only there for, for reference. So if we select just the images file and time test, we should be good. Right mouse click and upload. That will clearly take some time, so we'll come back when that's done. That's now concluded successfully and transferred 2,843 files. So the final thing is in this Mount US launch pad, we need to create a file called startclock.ini and put this in it. So let's copy that stuff there. I'm now going to create a hideous crime for which I will burn in hell for all eternity, which is to create the file using uh, WordPad. Here is our file. We want to save as plain text document with that name. Save that in the same file where we downloaded the lit clock things to. Again, back in FileZilla, we navigate to the Launchpad directory, as it said, and now we can upload our start clock to that directory. To make the display change every minute, we have to edit the crontab file root and add this line in here. Now, if you've stuck with me this far, um, you will no doubt realize by now that this is going to be a lot of fun as well. Notice it says when you log in that the system is mounted as read only. So we need to change that if we're going to edit the system file. We make it read writable. Go to our cron tab directory. We can see it only contains the root file. We make that file writable and then edit it using vi. Now, anybody that's used Vi before will know it's as user-friendly as a cornered rat. So uh, I think the easiest way would be to go capital G, capital A, which will then append 
to the end of the file. Now we're appending to the end of the file. We need to put in our five asterisks, followed by the rest of the command. Now we hit escape to go back to the command mode, write our file. Then we can quit Vi. Goodbye Vi. Pleasure as always. We should now restart the cron function and finally remount the system as read-only. Also notice on this page that the timelet file is at the end of the instructions. That's where we find the timelet files. If you've gone through all those instructions and um, followed them pretty much to the letter, then it should work for you. I think you'll agree that that was a lot of fun.